Hey guys, this is uh, Jacques from Kulu Linux. Uh, today I'm going to be breaking some new news, so that's great. Um, I know the project, every time we do a release, everything goes quiet, and the reason for that is I'm always working. So uh, I've been working on some stuff, <laughs> and uh, today I'm going to be talking about the direction of the project, what I've done, where we're going to, how we're going to do it. So uh, bear with me for a second before I climb into this sneak preview. Um, <clears throat> beginning of the year, I made a promise. Um, you know, I, I kind of said I would be working on Mukulu desktop. And that would be m mostly a focus of mine, as well as um, I would incorporate it into a rolling release, meaning a Debian build. Okay, so that is what I'm going to be showing off today, the current Debian build, which is at Alpha 2.05. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you what's been done and uh, what it looks like and, uh, you know, where to go and what to expect. So, um... That was one thing, the fact that we're working on a Debian edition. The other news, there's three three things that I really want to mention. The second one is that um, there is both a 64-bit and 32-bit version available, both fully functional, both at beta 2.05 at the moment. And um, at the time of release, there will be either four ISOs, meaning... Um, each, each architecture will have two ISOs, one normal build, one slim build. Um, or I might add in a script or something to sort of just turn a slim build into a normal build or something, I don't know. But um, there will be both options, okay, for each architecture. So that's currently what we're working on. The third bit of news is that we are taking a little bit of a different approach with this release. We are going to be releasing development builds to public now, okay? So we will release one or two offers to public, then one or two betas to public, and then, you know, one or two RC versions, and then the final release build. So as the progress of development happens, you know, we'll be releasing these builds to the public. So the public can test them, use them, play with it, whatever, give feedback, give suggestions, report bugs, uh, whatever floats your boat, you know, however you want to get involved with the project, you will now be able to do that. And you'll be able to see step by step what's happening, what progress is make, being made, and, uh, you know, give your opinion whether you like it or don't like it, or if there's something you'd like to see in there that you don't, or, you know, whatever the case might be. So I think this build, which went out to the testers today, this 2.05, um, they will test this build for a couple of days, maybe a week, and um, if they come back and they give me feedback and uh, there's no major bugs, because this is this 2.05 is a milestone. Every milestone will be releasing a ISO. 2.5 is definitely a milestone, one of our first milestones. So I'm looking to send this, this build out to the regular user, but... Um, I'm just waiting for some feedback to make sure that all the goals that I've set for the first milestone are met. If those goals are all met, then uh, this build that I'm showing you off here today will probably be um, live on a website in the next few days. Uh, next, I say, five to seven days. Who knows? Um, but anyway, let me get into the build so you guys can see what it's all about. So firstly, it's based on Debian Jesse. So that's Debian, the, the new stable, Jesse. Um, it also gets the cinnamon updates from the LMDE repo. So Debian, uh, the, the two main repos, obviously the Jesse repo and the LMDE repo. The Makulu repo is also enabled as well as the Jesse backports repo. And that repo is used for NVIDIA drivers and so forth. Okay, so basically it's a rolling release because all of these repos pretty much run forever. And uh, yeah, you get updates forever. So that's quite nice. So let me get into the OS itself. It's very much uh, very similar to the Ubuntu-based uh, Lindos that we released last month. There are a couple of changes, however, and I'll get into those. Um, but the guys that have used that version will, you know, you'll be able to follow me quite easily, yeah, because it's very much uh, very similar. Okay, so this uh, the, that Makulu that Ubuntu build is valid until two thousand and. 
2021. I don't know, somewhere around there. It's, it's valid for two, three, four years. So whoever downloads that, they, they can run that. Um, this build, however, will be forever. You know, you can get updates forever. So that's great. Um, at least core updates forever. So uh, let's get into this. If you boot it up first time, just like with the Ubuntu build, you get your welcome screen and you'll have some shortcuts to pieces of the OS that is vital. Installing drivers, software manager, forums, chat room, source location, setting your location for getting your updates, firewall, report bugs, update manager, driver manager, update antivirus, theme packs, and donate to the Makula project. Okay, so you've got some vital links here, and I will expand on this a lot over the next uh, next few ISOs that go out. Um, okay, so that's your welcome box. If you close it, you can always get it back. It is on the desktop there. You can double click it and get it there. It's also in the menu. Okay, just like with the other builds, um, this is very much themed similar to Windows. The first theme you see is, or the default theme you see is the uh, Windows 10 theme. So the whole system has a Windows 10 theme, Windows 10 shell theme, and it has been updated. I don't know if you can actually see, but you can now see the little tick boxes correctly and just some minor modifications to it to, you know, just refine the theme a lot more. Now, uh, before I get into themes, I really just want to get into the menu. Now, uh, let me just add another menu here. Add applets. Um, let's go add a menu here. Now, the Ubuntu-based build had the standard sort of Windows-looking menu, okay, which is great because it's very kind of like Windows 7 menu, which is pretty awesome, very simple, very straightforward to use, very easy. Um, not much problems with it at all. So that's nice because that's the old stock menu. However, with Debian Edition, I've changed that a little bit. We've now gone with the configurable menu, okay? The one designed and uh, coded by Letscape, okay? Now, this is a great menu, and originally I wanted to use it um, in the other build as well, the previous build, but uh, I didn't have it fully functional at that stage. You know, since they updated Cinnamon past 2.6.13, this menu has had a lot of problems all over the show. Um, and although there are quite a lot of workarounds for some of the problems, the one major bug was you couldn't right-click the menu. Because if you did right-click on the menu, you would freeze up the system. And that bug still exists. Um, <clears throat> so there's no known workaround for that. So, um, But I've managed to fix that. I've managed to fix it. So you can now right click configure uh, without any problems, no freezing up of the system. The default, the you know, this, how do I put this? This menu is great, man. You can really look at all these options. Um, there's just so many different templates you can choose from. So many options here that you can tick and untick and set. Uh, just it's insane the amount of ways that you can edit and change this menu. It's just the guys, you guys will have great fun playing with this menu. By default, I've got this layout, which is also similar to Windows, except for the extra panel on the left, which is a system panel, which is an accessible panel. I've disabled the favorites panel, which would usually pop up on the right. I just felt it was just a bit too much on the screen all at once, you know. Um, I use the accessible panel as the favorites instead of the actual favorites panel, but it actually works out pretty, pretty damn good cool looking you know but your basically your system icons all the like uh, vital parts of the system over on the left you've got your categories in the middle and you've got your apps on the right I've also set the apps as a dual dual panel app so you can kind of see two two rows at once which is nice because you know certain places you would usually have to scroll down but then yeah you wouldn't because you know you can easily see them um, what's also nice is when you hover your icon, your mouse cursor over an icon, it actually gives you the name and the description of the app at the top right corner of the menu, which is awesome. We've also got a search function, quit, log out, lock screen, which is, so it's a really cool menu. It also has a nice panel box here, but it's only, um, you can only see it with certain themes, okay? So a really, really great menu. And to my knowledge, 
This is the only working version of this menu on the planet, which is virtually bugless, okay? Uh, I mean, all the features are working. Add to panel, there it is. See it there? Let's go to um, add to accessible panel, there it is. You can go add to favorites, but the favorites is not enabled. So add to desktop, and you will see it on the desktop. So it's on the desktop. Let's just delete that. It's on the panel. Remove that, and it's in the menu. Let's remove it. As you can see, fully functional, really, really great. Uh, all features working, and this is a great, great addition to this, to this um, project because I tell you, uh, the default cinnamon menu is just a little bit blah. It lacks options. It, it's really just not I mean it's okay for people that like it but people that want options you you would really stuck and with the changes they made in cinnamon um, basically rendered all the rest of the new menus mostly useless the only menu half working is stock and um, to my knowledge this is the only build in the world that has this menu fully functional I mean everything's functioning and you can right click configure mm -hmm. your system doesn't freeze up everything's fully working you can change between all the different options I'm not going to go through all of them there's just too many um, but you can really go crazy with editing uh, on this menu you can make it look and feel exactly how you want this is great great stuff because I tell you you spend a lot of time in your menu you know you're always opening up apps and uh, a, a person needs to feel comfortable in his menu you know if you feel comfortable in the menu the rest of the OS is is um, you know just easy and, and feels more comfortable in general so ease of use is always important and uh, I really really love this menu Letscape did such such a great job anyway um, so that's the menu let's get into the themes so to my knowledge this is the only menu in the world this version of configurable menu that actually works and I have it working in both 64 bit and 32 bit equally as well and as you can see, if I go to system information, you will see here it is version 3.06 of Cinnamon, which is pretty much up there with the newest build. So the menu is working on that. The operating system of Kulinda's, uh, the kernel is 316.04 Debian based. This is the 64-bit build. 32-bit build works equally as well. Anyway, I want to get into the themes now. Um, so if we go have a look at the themes, are pretty much uh, just like the previous build. It has the Windows 10, 8, 7, Vista, XP, and Classic themes available. Okay, so you've got pretty much the whole spectrum here. So currently you, you're seeing the Windows 10 theme, and if we switch down to Windows 8, and switch to uh, Windows 8 here, Windows 8 icons, and Windows 8 GTK theme, and the Windows 8 shell theme. You'll we'll see the changes immediately. The Windows 8 is a little bit more of a gray shade. The buttons are flatter, more kind of with a blue highlight. The borders are thinner with a uh, blue and red um, pop-up icons. The icons on the panel are flat, as you can see the standard Windows 8 icons. You will now also see the actual um, control box around the system sh shortcuts or favorites as I call them and so you see you've got a, a much more Windows 8 look here yeah, if you open up yeah you'll see it's a much more Windows 8 kind of look you know the, the, the look between um, Windows 8 and 10 is really minor the changes I mean uh, it's a very similar look apart from the icons you won't see much difference there but if you jump back to Windows 7 we go here to Windows 7, and Windows 7 controls, and the Windows 7 theme shell, which uh, I'm sure you guys will notice, anybody that's used the last build will notice this is different. You have now the Windows 7 menu, so it's Windows 7 look menu or approximation. You'll have the Windows 7, and look how well, how good this looks. I mean, this literally looks like Windows 7 with the shiny uh, light blue um, panel at the top, the shiny blue buttons, uh, look at this, this is just brilliant, just brilliant, even the window borders, so it's got a very, very Windows 7-like look, 
and if we go back to Windows Vista we choose the Vista icons we choose the Vista controls and we choose the Vista shell theme you'll see now you've got the Vista black borders with the pop-up buttons on top you've also got the uh, shell theme the Vista shell theme with the Vista looking menu as you can see you know the Windows 7, Windows Vista and Windows 8 no Windows 7 and Vista menus were very similar where the Vista was just darker and the Windows 7 was more of a, 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 a sort of a more of a bluer color the Vista was more black as you can see is visible here and uh, of course the icons and the actual GTK theme as you can see it's got the dark blue ribbon kind of um, panel at the top with the shiny blue buttons it's got the green icons however when it gets to system it should turns over to the sort of yellow icons which is brilliant because you know just like it's supposed to be so really really great you've got the whole windows vista look right there then if we go back to windows xp the classic xp go to xp uh, and xp okay now you've got the Windows XP look with the Windows light blue and blue as well as the GTK themes and the icons. As you can see you've got a very very XP look here. And there's another little surprise. I've got a couple of mouse cursors here. I've got the Windows new which is the from I'd say from Windows Vista up. That's the new cursor icon that Microsoft used to use. Then you've got the XP version. As you can see, the icon, icon, the cursor changed a little bit. If you have a look there, look at the one and watch it change. It's got a little bit of a longer tail. And if you open certain stuff, you'll notice they see the hourglass, see the blue hourglass, just like XP. Pretty cool, isn't it? So I've even got the mouse cursors working the way they're supposed to. Okay, so that's the XP look down to even the mouse cursor with the hourglass I mean that's just brilliant just brilliant um, and then if we go back to the old Windows Classic as you can see the border changed there the classic icons the classic GTK theme uh, as you can see there the GTK theme changed the classic shell theme and then I've also got the old classic mouse cursor as you can see the mouse cursor you see a change there very old so now if we open up the menu you see you've got a very classic look there look how beautiful this is this was not in the Ubuntu based version uh, this has been updated it's a lot of work in this look how awesome that looks doesn't that look just like the old Windows Classic this is just oh my god uh, so 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 great and we also had the bug before where folder would turn black and you couldn't see the text when highlighted that's been fixed as well and the whole theme is just running great look at that highlighting blue like it's supposed to uh, even your right click menu is the classic look and feel I mean that's just sick on so many levels and of course the mouse cursor with the old classic as you can see it's got the old little hourglass see the one before XP so you've even got the classic mouse cursors how brilliant is that so if we go back again to themes and uh, just quickly have a look at those mouse cursors to show off one or two the new one of course um, if you open up something and it, it's got C it's got that uh, Windows 7 8 and Vista and 10 kind of little circle that runs then I've also included a large cursor for people that uh, you know visually impaired that might want a bigger mouse cursor um, I don't know if there's anybody out there that will actually use this but uh, I have included it so that's pretty nice um, and it's got the little watch there Just the cursor pack I found online pretty neat um, so yeah then I also included a storm pack storm light and storm dark and if we open up something you'll see it's got a similar to windows kind of thing but it's got a, a more flatter kind of look it's pretty pretty sick as well you've got the white and the dark the light and the dark the dark version is obviously black where the little black little circle spins so it's kind of i think this is a fan build of the windows 8 mouse cursor just a different take on it 
So that's nice. You've got this nice little cursor back here. I mean, it's not, it's not massive, but it's also at least a couple of variations, and they fit with the different themes. And so that's just really, really great. Um, I'm just going to switch back to Windows 10 here. Yeah, Windows 10, Windows 10, Windows 10. Okay. The other thing I want to show off is the um, the all the uh, icon packs that have come in. There's quite a lot of new icon packs. So let's move this over here. Put it down there. Let's open up a, a file browser over here so you can see. Uh, so I can just show off some of these icon packs. Okay, so um, the Aid Waiter, Gnome, High Color, and the Contrast, they are always in there. I leave them there because there's a lot of the default apps that make use of these icon packs. So I never really remove those. I could, but I don't. I, I just like to keep them there. It just makes everything less complicated. So they, you will always find them in all of the Makula builds. Okay, they're just the default icon packs for certain certain icons like the gnome games and, and things like that so yeah gnome apps and, and uh, software manager things like that okay so just ignore those uh, unless you want to use one of them but i mean they just look very plain okay so um i've got a whole lot of different variations of windows icon packs here some are fan made uh, some are the actual ones that kind of replicate the official ones and uh, if we just run through them we've got the windows 10 as you can see, there's the Windows 10 icon pack, desktop, and the file browser. We've got the fullest, which is kind of this similar, but in reverse, and it's got a much more sort of shinier look on it, um, as opposed to the flat. Then we've got the 7, uh, and we've got the Windows 8. Then we've got the Windows Blue, which is, I think, supposed to be like a Windows 7, but a blue blue version, all the icons are blue. Uh, you've got the classic, which you saw earlier. You've got the, this one I call default, WinDev for default. This is the default one I use for Windows 10. It's very similar to the Windows 10 icons, but it's not as flat, it's more rounder, and it's got a nice shine to it. I really like that. And it's got the, the little computer box over there as the icon, as opposed to the default Windows 10. I mean, you can easily switch the default Windows 10, the old one, but I really like this one, so this is the one that I use for default. You've got the Windows F, which looks very much like the Windows 10. There are some subtle differences, though, but I'm not going to go into that now. You've got the Humanity, Windows version of the Humanity icons, which is nice. This is actually an old, old icon pack that I've revived. I think it was, came out in, like, 2007 or something. So that's a actually a nice icon pack as well for those the guys the humanity fans um you've got like a windows version of it like a light yellow colored you know sort of similar to windows and i know there's a lot of guys out there that love the victory pack which is a little different to the fullest pack as you can see the, the icons change there they're similar but not exactly the same uh so that's included the vista the default vista is included the one that changes from green to blue and then you've got the Vista Blue, which keeps everything blue, or everything stays blue, like a blue-green. And then you've got the WinX, which is also similar to the <laughs> Victory and the Fullest, but it's kind of another different take on it. So yeah, then you've got the XP pack, obviously the default XP pack, and then you've got the XP Luna, which is uh, almost like a fan-made. Uh, you know, you've got the extra... XP themes that came out back in the days and you've got this Luna theme which is like a, a variation of XP and then you've got the Luna theme uh, the Luna icon pack which is this one that I've included so as you can see you've got a lot of nice options here I mean geez you can really go crazy with cursors icon packs GTK themes window borders and desktop themes whichever windows you feel most comfortable in if you want to the newest Windows 10 look, which is very smooth, very flat, very nice. Or whether you're loading the the Linux for your dad because you want to convert him over from XP to um, Linux, you know, I mean, this is just so easy. I mean, you can even, even the XP icon, uh, the XP cursor, and the XP theme, you know, he would feel right at home. I mean, yeah, he might, a little, the menu might confuse him a little, it's a, you know, it's a little different, but I mean, it would not take long to get used to this. Uh, if you remove the side panel, this menu is virtually the same as a normal 
standard Windows menu. The only thing extra here is the, the left panel. So it doesn't really take long to get used to this at all. It feels very comfortable. Um, so anybody would from XP would just fall right in here. I mean, you know, if, he, if he's using um, the old classic system, same thing. You know, you can just change everything to classic. And uh, even the put the old classic cursor and the classic shell theme and automatically whoever is used to working in classic would also feel fit, just fit right in feel very comfortable you know there's minor things that they would have to adjust to so really all the bases are covered this is a great look great 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 look and uh, the best of all it's rolling release install once never have to install again obviously this is an alpha bolt so you know uh, not quite the case of the alpha i'm talking about release build once it goes live for release install once never install again there are certain things i could patch from one offer to the next offer but obviously not everything can be patched so i would advise that you do if you download an offer build and a new iso comes out that you do um, reinstall obviously that's the purpose of alpha and beta the makula repos are enabled so i can send through custom patches on things that i do patch um, of course, the clock on the desktop, the calendar and the quotes is controlled by the wallpaper changer, which has many options. I'm not going to go into them, but um, I've included the default pack that was also in Ubuntu, the background pack. So they're essentially the same background as the release last month. I will update a lot of these, so I will be making some changes to them. Um, they'll probably have a couple of ones that get removed and a couple of new ones that come in. But um, this is Alpha 2.05. It runs well. The default software manager here is the Mint software manager. I'm in live mode. This is the first time I'm booting it up, so expect it to, to take a while to load. It is not a very fast software manager, but it's very easy to use. Um, the icons are nice. Um, as you can see, there's more than 70,000 packages available. So if we go to, for example, games, click on the games, and uh, as you can see here, uh, let's go to something like Edge Wars. You can see it's 94 reviews. Just close that. 94 reviews. Let's open it up, and you can see it says not installed. Gives you a description. Gives you a little preview windows, and tells you what what uh, packages get used and what size, and of course the review. So really um a really easy to use to install you just click the install button it is it is so easy um the update manager is the lint mint, uh, mint update manager really easy to use very simple um so yeah this is this is great i tell you this this operating system runs so so well i know you guys are really going to love it and uh the first the first alpha will be available within the next, I'm guessing the next seven, maybe ten days, maybe seven days, maybe five days, I don't know. I'm just waiting for the testers to run through the ISO and give some feedback and we'll take it from there. The installer, I opted to go with the default Mint installer. So I've just taken the Mint installer and just adapted it and converted it to sort of work with uh, this build. Okay, so... I didn't want to really redo something that's already been done and made. So it's basically the default Mint installer if you run through all the options. It's fairly easy to use. Uh, let's just go to uh, just whatever. Uh, very easy to use, simple. Um, the options are all standard. Um, so yeah, as you can see there, very, very easy to use. Nothing to it. Um, and the last thing I want to show off, um, oh, before I show off that, um, this the alpha build is based on the slim edition, so there's virtually nothing installed here. You've got a couple accessories, but it's just calculator and text editor and screenshot and archive manager, terminal, obviously, and then the variety. Um, graphics, there's nothing. Internet, there's Firefox web browser, and that's about it, and then a couple of backend apps. Apart from that, there's nothing on the OS. You can just go crazy installing your own stuff from the software manager or the package manager. So um, that's really great. Um, 
that so the alpha builds and some of the beta builds will probably just be the slim edition so if you're testing uh, expect virtually nothing on you can go crazy installing your own stuff there's a lot of stuff in, in the package manager including the WPS office if you do like it it is there um, what a great look man what just wow it runs so much smoother and better on Debian than it did on Ubuntu even in the early stages the logon screen is obviously the MDM theme manager so we've got this modified version of well, what I think is one of the default MDM themes that I've modified you know just with put some extra transparency on gave it a new background um, anyway so you've got a fairly decent looking logging manager so that's quite nice so that's pretty much it uh, this is the Makulu Linux Lindos edition and this is Debian based on the new Cinnamon 3.06 this is Lindos, meaning it's a mesh between Linux and Windows. And as you see, it's pretty damn awesome. It's got a great look. It's got great feel. Everything's been updated. The themes have been updated. There's new icon packs. There's new mouse cursors. Um, there's a new menu. I mean, just there's just so many new things that, that's coming your way. And it's all running so smoothly. And keep in mind, this is the very one of the very early alpha builds still, right? This is 2.05. This is probably the this well this is the first public alpha build that will go live, but it is a very early alpha build, so um, it's running pretty well for an alpha, don't you think? So I just wanted to show this off to you guys, and uh, yeah, I hope you you uh, enjoy using it because I don't know if I'm going to put this video out before it actually goes live, um, but it should be it should be live within the next few days, so just keep an eye out for that and. Uh, yeah, get involved in the project, you know, if, you, if you've got some skills, we could use it. If you just want a bug report, great, could always use more testers. Um, if you have some feedback on something you want to see or something you don't want to see, give feedback. We're always listening. Uh, it doesn't mean we'll do it, but at least we'll listen, you know, and, con and weigh the options. Um, so, yeah, expect this in 64-bit as well as 32-bit. The 32-bit version is made of, is also at 2.05, also fully functional. So, great for 32-bit PCs. Um, and it will be available in four flavors when it does one day go live, you know, the release build. So, um, I also want to say thank you for the guys that did donate to the project last month. Uh, I think I made about 100 and... I think about $130 in donations. Um, if you guys can please just keep that up, please, because uh, <laughs> I'm already running out of space on the um, repo box, which I think they're going to tell me. Oh, I actually want to email them about that today because last night I was getting errors, critical errors, insufficient disk space. So I think um, they may tell me to upgrade to the next package, which is okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I just don't want to hit the, the, the same problems that I had last year where I had to switch repo boxes off because, you know, the project wasn't paying for it. So if you guys can keep that up, please, I'll put in the hard work. You guys keep the project going and, you know, it will be a great relationship. Um, but I do want to thank the guys that did donate. Uh, it's very much appreciated. You guys took so much uh, load off my shoulders that I could freely just work on Makulu. And then you see what happens when I... When I can do this with no stress, you see the results I put out. This is great, great work. So, um, yeah, I just want to say thanks for that. And uh, keep an eye on the website. I know the website's loading very slow at the moment. I actually uh, I want to take it one day off and just clean it up. I think it's all those videos plaguing the front panel, the, 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 the front page or something. I'm not quite sure what's making it so slow. Uh, but I really want to start cleaning up that website a bit and because I know even with me it's loading in terribly slow and it's very annoying. So I'll fix that as well, you know. Um, but anyway, this is Jacques from Makulu Linux. I uh, just wanted to show off what is coming your way very soon. And uh, yeah, I'll keep making videos and doing the hard work. You guys fund the project and uh, yeah, chat to you guys soon. Cheers.